Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore, with music by Claude Sweeten. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Our trusty old almanac tells us it'll soon be time to plant those victory crops America so vitally needs this year. Everyone who possibly can should plant a garden and see it through to the harvest. And now, here's a mighty pleasing way to get some of that extra energy you'll need for work in your victory garden. Eat plenty of parquet margarine, the nourishing spread that tastes so good. Parquet is one of the best energy foods you can possibly serve. What's more, Kraft guarantees every single pound of parquet to contain 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So get some of that needed energy and vitamin A this pleasing way by spreading bread, toast, or rolls with delicious parquet. Ask for the spread that tastes so good. And that's Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's join our old friend Gildersleeve. Spring, as it must to all places, has come at last to Summerfield, and Gildersleeve is feeling its magic influence. But as he basks in the wreath of his after-breakfast cigar, he finds that he's not the only spring-struck member of his family. Here's the faithful Bertie, for instance. Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, you busy? Oh, no, Bertie, just enjoying the beautiful day. On a day like this, a man just likes to sit still and do nothing. Well, sir, it's all in how you look at it. Now, me, I thought it was such a nice day, I'd like to get started on my spring cleaning. Oh, great idea. House could stand a little going over. Yes, sir. I thought maybe I could do some work on these floors in here. You're right. They really need it. Yes, sir. Uh, and I was wondering, uh, could you take the rugs out and beat them for a while? Ah, uh, Bertie, I wonder if this whole thing is really necessary. <laughs> Spring cleaning? Yeah. Of course it's necessary, Mr. Gillsleep. We do it every year. Uh-huh, we do it every year. In other words, it's customary. But customary and necessary are two different things, Bertie. I've often thought to myself... Bertie keeps this house in such good shape all through the year. Why does she bother with spring cleaning? We don't need it, Bertie. Forget the whole thing. Yes, sir. You think I could get Leroy to beat the rugs? <sighs> no, I didn't. I think of that. Just the thing. Have Leroy beat the rugs, then you can polish up these floors and clean the whole house. It's filthy. <laughs> what a man. I'll get Leroy at it right away, Bertie. Oh, uh, Leroy! Leroy! What? Come down here. Don't make me shout, young man. Come down here. Okay. What's he doing up there, anyway? I don't know, Mr. Gilsey. He says he's practicing his magic. Oh, that again? That's all he talks about. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The masked wizard thanks you for your kind reception. Listen, wizard. For my first trick this evening, I shall endeavor to present the mystery of the missing egg. It, not this now. This trick was presented to me many years ago by a celebrated Indian swainy. It, Leroy. Oh, and can't you let me practice my patter? I got it down pretty good now, but I can't keep saying it to myself. I don't want to hear any patter. You have to have it. Why? Keeps the tricks from being so boring. <laughs> well, that's a step in the right direction. But I didn't get you downstairs to listen to your patter, my boy, or to watch your tricks either. I've got a job for you right now. A job? Saturday's my pay, my day off. Well, it's really nothing at all, my boy. Just a little household chore you should be glad to do. Cleaning out the cellar? Yeah. Oh, you can do that next Saturday. <laughs> this is much easier. I do it myself, except I'm busy. To take these rugs out and beat them till they're clean. That's all. If I do it, will you watch me do a magic show tonight? Can't watch it tonight. I'm taking Mrs. Ransom to the country club dance. How about a show this afternoon, then? Well, if you finish the rugs. Okay. Boy, what a terrible way to sell tickets. <laughs> hey, here's Mars. Why shouldn't she help me? Help you what? Here's the mail, Uncle Mars. Mail? Oh, all bills, I suppose. Anything for me? We'll be writing to you. Something here from the National Geographic. Bill from Dr. Pettibone. Hey, what's this? Let go. It's purple. Who's it from? Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve S. It's Leroy. My gosh, it's got perfume on it. <sniffs> Smell, Marge. Leroy, give me that. Okay, gosh. I don't know who it could be. 
Leroy, stop trying to read over my shoulder. I wasn't reading it, Uncle. I was just... Go looking. away. Go do something. Go lay an egg. I need an audience. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, Bertie? Could I trouble you for that rug you're standing on? Oh, yes, of course. Grab hold of that end there, Leroy. Uh, wait a minute. Don't pull it with me standing on it. Come on, Marjorie. Let's go in the den. Now, maybe I can read my mail in peace. Can't imagine who this letter could... Well, I'll be darned. What is it? After all these years... Uncle Mort, what is it? Violet. Who's Violet? An old friend. An old friend of your uncle's. I've never even heard you mention anyone named Violet. I never have. The memory was too painful. Oh. Yes, my dear, this is a chapter of your uncle's life he thought was closed. Is she someone you were very fond of? Marjorie, she was the most beautiful girl I've ever known. Really? What was she like? Well, she was... She was just beautiful, that's all. She had hair that was all... I don't know, it was just beautiful. And when she smiled, it was beautiful. She must have been beautiful. <laughs> she was. I remember her eyes. They were the bluest eyes you've ever seen. Only they weren't exactly blue. They were more purple. Only they weren't really purple. They were... Uh, violet. That's it. They were violet. Now, why didn't I ever think of that? Violet with the violet eyes. I used to bring her violets all the time because that was her name. <laughs> Violet. Or Vi, as I used to call her. I was only 19 at the time. Uncle Mort, were you really in love with her? I would have married her in a minute. Then why didn't you? Why didn't you ask her? I did. Oh. Yes, my dear, that's life. Mine stopped when I was 19. <laughs> oh, now, Unky. It's true. When a man loves deeply, he loves only once. <sighs> Now you know. That's why your old uncle has never married. That's why women have never held any interest for him. I know what you're going to say now. I wasn't going to say it. Leela and I are... Leela and I are just good friends, that's all. We may have gotten in a little over our depth there one time, but... What about Eve Goodwin? Eve? Well, we're good friends, too. It's never been the way it was with Violet. Nothing was ever like that. Oh, dear... Tell me, Unky, what happened? Why didn't she marry you? Well, there was a fellow named Harry. Yes? That's all. There was a fellow named Harry. <laughs> Last name was Kane, a hurdler. He was on the track team at college. We used to call him Hurry, Hurry Kane. <laughs> he was fast on his feet, but that's all you could say for him. He went into insurance later. She married him? She married him. Don't ask me why. It's the last I ever saw of her. I saw him once. Tried to sell me an insurance policy. Did you buy it? <laughs> Good for you. Well, it's all water over the dam now. No use crying over spilt milk. Poor Unky. Gad, she was lovely. But as I say, that chapter of my life is closed forever. Or is it? Let's see what she has to say here been talking so much, I haven't even read it. Dear Tubby. <laughs> she always used to call me Tubby. I was a little plump in those days. <laughs> Say, she's coming through Summerfield tomorrow. You hear that, Marjorie? She's coming to Summerfield. Really? This was written yesterday. That means she's arriving today. Oh, gosh, I'm so excited. What else does she say? Yeah, let me see. I'll be passing through Summerfield tomorrow. You heard about poor Harry, I suppose, and I couldn't... Wait a minute, what happened to Harry? She doesn't say, does she? Poor old Harry. His policies must have matured. <laughs> I only hope he was covered. Uh, Uncle Mort, when's she arriving? Well, she gets in at 5.15. Says she'll be wearing a blue hat, in case I don't recognize her. <laughs> that chance. Oh, Uncle Mort, I think it's so romantic. And it's your age, too. Huh? <laughs> to think that you'll be meeting her this very afternoon. I should think you'd be so excited. Oh, I am. <laughs> My heart is actually pounding. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gillsleeve. I didn't know you were still in here. That's all right, Bertie. Uh, Marjorie, do your old uncle a favor, will you? You run along, too, huh? I'd kind of like to be alone for a few minutes. 
alone with your memories. I know. <laughs> okay. Alone with my memories. Well, I'll just stretch out on the couch here. <laughs> Silly to get all excited like this. Think I was a kid. George, I feel like a kid. Yep. Remember when I used to go and call on her? And I'd wait for her to come downstairs. Same feeling. <laughs> Couldn't get my breath. I'd sit there trying to talk to her mother. One eye on the stairs. And the words wouldn't come out. And finally she'd come down. As beautiful as the dawn. Oh, Violet, I loved you so. If only I could have told you what was in my heart. Vi, dear. Dear, darling Vi. What'll it be like to see you again? To hear your dear voice? I remember it so well. It was like music when you spoke my name. Tubby, you called me. And I liked it. Tubby. Tubby. Yes, Vi, it's Tubby. Oh, Tubby, I've come to you at last. It's been so long, so long. I know, dear. <laughs> oh, can you ever forgive me for what I've done to you? Can you ever forget? I can't forget, Vi, but I can forgive. Oh, Tubby, you were always so good to me. Why did I ever marry Harry? You can say that again. <laughs> Speaking of Harry... Tubby, you've heard? About Harry? Yes, I've heard. Oh, poor Harry. Perhaps it was all for the best. Oh, I can go along with that. Oh, Tubby, you are glad to see me, aren't you? Oh, tell me you're glad to see me. I'm glad to see you. I mean, gosh, yes. <laughs> well, then. Well? Well, aren't you going to take me in your arms? Am I? Oh, Tubby, darling. Tubby, Tubby, Tubby. Drive, Martin. <laughs> huh? Oh, um, Leela. Well, don't you look silly lying there hugging yourself. I was cold. Bertie said I'd find you in here. Come along. Hey, let go. Come along. Truck, Ma. Let go my ear. You know where we're going right this minute. We're going down to the florist to buy Leela a corsage. Huh? Aren't I terrible? But I wouldn't dream of going to a spring dance without wearing flowers. And I knew you never in the world would think of sending me any. So but Leela... we'll just pick them out and then I'll pretend I never saw them before. How's that? I, I thought maybe a little old fashioned bouquet of wildflowers. I'm wearing my white organdy and it's quite girlish. Uh, what do you think? Uh, Leela, I, uh, about tonight. Yes? Well, the truth is, I forgot about the dance at the country club. Forgot about it? Yeah, you see, well, you must, mustn't misunderstand. I'd like to take you, but this is sort of a previous engagement. I mean, I sort of got involved. I'm sorry. I don't know what you got involved in, Throckmorton, but let me remind you that you invited me to this dance a good three weeks ago. This is something I got involved in a good 30 years ago. <laughs> well... Who is she? Name's Violet. Violet? Violet? <laughs> oh, really, Throckmorton, where do you find them? <laughs> What's so funny about Violet? I can see how it might not seem so funny to anyone named Throckmorton. Well, I'll be going now. Lily, you're not mad, are you? Gracious, why should I be mad? There are plenty of attractive men. Oh, that's good. I was afraid you might not understand. I understand perfectly, Throckmorton. Leela, by George, I'll say one thing for you. You're a good sport. Mr. Gildersleeve, that's one thing I won't take from any man. <laughs> <laughs> Great sense of humor, that girl. I wonder if she meant it. Uh, Leela! Leela, wait a minute. Leela, if you're going by the florist, tell him to save me some violets. Yeah, I guess you meant it. Fred 
Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. I think you women will agree that some foods, more than others, help solve that problem of how to serve tasty, nourishing meals despite ration point handicaps. Take a fine food like parquet margarine, for example. What a wonderful help women have found parquet to be. Parquet adds good flavor, good nourishment to every meal. Yet parquet is amazingly economical, low in price, low in ration point cost, but at the same time high in all the qualities of a fine spread for bread. It's always such a pleasure to serve parquet. The flavor is so fresh, so delicate, so satisfying. It's rich in food energy value, and 9,000 units of vitamin A are guaranteed in every single pound. So for better tasting, more nourishing meals, serve parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, the spread that tastes so good. Tomorrow, buy Parquet. It's made by Kraft. Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. He somewhat nervously consumed his lunch, and after a long mental debate as to whether he should dress first and go to the florists afterwards, or go to the florists first and then dress, here he is in his bedroom picking out a necktie. Uh, let's see. This one is expensive, but I never liked it. She always liked a figured tie. Nice polka dot would be just... Where the devil is it? Confound it, I only bought the darn thing last week. Bertie, Marjorie, where's my polka dot tie? Did you say something, Uncle? I'm looking for my blue polka dot tie, Leroy. Have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Just a second, I'll get it. Well, if that kid is starting to wear my neckties... Ladies and gentlemen, I have here an ordinary box. That is, it looks like an ordinary box. However... Leroy, I don't want tricks. I want my necktie. Just a sec. The box is empty, is it not? Nothing in the box. Nothing in my hands. Nothing up my sleeve. Leroy? Now the masked wizard reaches into the box, and presto! Give me that necktie. Here. See, I did it pretty good, didn't I, Unc? Did what? Produced the necktie. Didn't it mystify you? Hey, what's happened to this necktie? Have you been wearing it? Oh, no, I never wear your ties. You told me not to. Well, how'd you happen to have it? I was just using it for a silk. Magicians have to have them. Oh, they do. Yeah, you have to have silk because it's the only stuff that rolls up into a ball. <laughs> Leroy, you practically ruined a necktie that cost a dollar thirty-five cents. Does it strike you that magic is rather an expensive hobby? It sure is. This box costs six dollars. Six dollars? Young man, I won't have you throwing away good money on this junk. I didn't. I traded it. What's more, if I catch you using any of my neckties again, you'll regret it mightily. Okay. You want to see my show now? No, Leroy. But you promised. You said after I finished the rugs. My boy, the episode with the necktie didn't exactly put me in the mood for a magic show. However, I would keep my word, except I have to go downtown on very urgent business. Oh. Well, gosh, what about tonight? I told you I was engaged for this evening, Leroy. Yeah, but I thought Mrs. Ransom gave you the brush. Leroy, do you want me to give you the brush? Oh, no. Then forget the magic. What can I do for you this afternoon? Not a thing, Peavy. I saw there was nobody in here, so I came in to wait for the 515 bus. And Judge Hooker's in the phone booth there. Have a stool and make yourself comfortable. Well, I... All right. Uh, care to put your violets in a glass of water? Huh? No, thanks. I'll just hold them. Bus ought to be here any minute. Yes, yeah, you do right now. Uh, expecting a visitor, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, Gildy, kind of listening on my telephone conversation? I haven't the slightest interest in your telephone conversations, Judge. I was talking to an old lady friend of yours. What? Eve Goodwin. I'm taking her to the country club dance tonight. Oh, well, have a good time. We will. Who are the violets for, Leela? No, Judge, they're not for Leela. I'm meeting a lady on the 515 bus, and they're for her. Oh. Anybody I know, Gildy? Nope. That's all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. man wants to keep something to himself. That's his privilege. Uh, is the lady a relative? No. As a matter of fact, she's a very lovely lady I knew some years ago. She has violet eyes, and she's dying to see me. <laughs> you can laugh all you want to, Judge. You never had a woman like this in your life. It's a sure thing Peavy never did. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Eh? <laughs> Peavy, you're happily married. Oh, yes, but even a married man has his memories. 
Why, Phoebe, I never would have thought it of you. Well, she didn't have violet eyes, but she had something. <laughs> Was this before you met Mrs. Peavy? Oh, certainly. I, I met this lady about a year before I met Mrs. Peavy. She was the daughter of old Mr. Bensinger. He was the head of the firm where I was working, Bensinger and Holtz, wholesale drug concern. Fine company, Bensinger and Holtz. Their slogan was purity and quality. Never mind the advertising, Peavy. What about the girl? <laughs> we used to call the partners Purity Bensinger and Quality Holtz. They're behind their backs, of course. The girl, Peavy. Oh, yes. Well, as I say, she was Mr. Bensinger's daughter, the apple of the old man's eye. His only daughter, I presume. No, he had twelve. <laughs> but she was the only one he could stand. You see, he kept expecting a boy, and each girl made him madder. But he decided to train this girl in the business, and it was my job to teach her. Oh? Huh? Teach her what? Well, the laboratory end of it. She and I used to be alone every afternoon in that laboratory. <laughs> Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, was she good looking? A dish for the gods. Hi, right, George, this is good. Wait a minute, Peavy, I think I hear the bus. No, just a dump truck. <laughs> Go ahead, Peavy, what happened in the laboratory? Well, I made progress. You did? Yes, sir. Inside of one month, I had her making aspirin tablets. Aspirin tablets? Making them just as well as I could make them myself. There must be something in heredity. I don't care what they say. What about the girl, Peavy? Well, in another month, I had her doing mortal and pestle work. And a month after that, she was on solutions and titrations. Honestly, gentlemen, she, she had my head in a whirl. Yes. Wait a minute. Do you mean to tell me you spent all this time alone with this beautiful girl in the laboratory and you never, you never, didn't you ever kiss her? Mr. Gildersleeve. She was my employer's daughter. Well, that settles it, Peavy. You're made of wood, that's all. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Her father was watching us all the time through a peephole. That's certainly a lovely memory, Peavy. Yes, it is, Mr. Gildersleeve. I can still see her in my mind's eye, stirring up a batch of magnesia. <laughs> Is that your bus coming in, Gildy? Bus? Where? I didn't hear anything. Yes, sir. Here she comes, right down the street. You're right. Where's my hat? Oh, on my head. <laughs> Violets. Oh, here. Well, I'm off. You going to introduce the lady to your friends, Gildy? You stay inside the store, Judge, if you know what's good for you. Come on in front, Phoebe. Let's watch this. Good luck, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thanks, Phoebe. Uh, let's see. I guess they'll let him out of that bus at the front door. Oh. Sorry, madam. I was looking at the bus. Women like that ought to stay in the house. Well, here they come. Uh, isn't her. Isn't her. Soldier, it isn't him. Blue hat. Here she comes. Here she comes. Hey, where do you think you're going? Pardon me, sir. This is an emergency. Hey, Gildy, who's your fat friend? Peavy? i got to hide someplace. you got a back door? Yeah, right through the prescription room, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, much obliged. Watch out for the garbage pail in the alley. <laughs> Uncle Mort, is that you? Uncle Mort? Uh, yes, it's me. Well, where's... where is she? Help me off with my galoshes, will you, my dear? I'm a little tired tonight. Of course. Here, I'll sit on the stairs. Punky, what happened? Wasn't she on the bus? Yeah, she was on it. Well, tell me about it. You were going to bring her home to dinner. Marjorie, let me give you a piece of advice. Never try to dig up the past. Why? What do you mean? Live for the present, my dear, and the future. Never look back. I don't understand. Well, you're young. I don't know that I can explain well, I'll tell you this. I never knew until tonight how old I am. Unky, you mustn't talk like that. It wasn't just seeing her that, like that. It made me realize how I must look to her. Old and fat. You're not old. Uh, the other foot. Yeah, I'm through, and I know it. Lucky to have a good little niece like you to help me off with my galoshes in my old age. Uncle Mort, you make me sick when you talk like that. Now, stop drooling. Huh? You run into some old girlfriend who's got into the pastries and let herself go and you get all sad. 
I bet she wasn't so much when she was 16, either. Why, Marjorie. No, now that I think of it, you may be right. She always was a little on the hefty side. I don't know where she got off to call me Tubby. All you ever saw, probably, was her violet eyes. Well, I'm a sucker for violet eyes. Now, there's Mrs. Ransom. She's every bit as old, but she's taking care of herself. Yes, by George. I'll, <laughs> I'll say that for Leela. She's well-preserved. <laughs> well, don't ever let her hear you say it. Yeah, and she's got spirit, too. I like that. She's not the type who would settle down and marry a hurdle jumper. You know, maybe I ought to invite her over to dinner. Bertie's got all that food out there. Why don't you? I'll do it. I was planning to take her to the country club dance anyway. I'll run right over there right now. Wait, don't you want your galoshes? Oh, hang the galoshes. But you might get wet. Uh, a little water never hurt a young fellow like me, my dear. I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey. Better be ready about half past eight. Now, honey, Well? I'm back. Were you gone? <laughs> <laughs> Great sense of humor. Leela, I find I'm going to be able to take you to the dance after all. Isn't that great? I'm afraid you found that out a little late. Well, better late than never, I always say. I want you to come over to dinner, too. It just happens, Mr. Gildersleeve, that I have been invited to go to the dance by another gentleman, including dinner, and not home-cooked either, at a restaurant where we shall probably have lobster Newberg. You'll probably get fat. <laughs> Guess you didn't hear me. Doggone it, why are women so mean to me? Why should I go to a country club when I can get entertainment like this in my own home? <laughs> oh, you're kidding. No, I mean it. Uh, say, Leroy. Yeah? There's one trick I'd really like to see. What's that? Do you know how to saw a woman in half? No, but I guess I could find out. You find out, my boy. You find out, and I'll watch you do it every night of the week. <laughs> on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. In these days of temporary shortages and the small ration point budget, have you learned how Kraft Dinner can help you? A food store near you has Kraft Dinner, two boxes of this delicious macaroni and cheese for just one red ration point. And what a special help that quick-made macaroni and cheese is. Each Kraft Dinner box serves four folks with fluffy light macaroni that has really rich cheddar cheese flavor through and through. With Kraft Dinner's two magic ingredients, you cook this dish in just seven minutes flat, a wonderful main dish all by itself. And you can do tricks with this swell macaroni and cheese. For instance, press the hot Kraft Dinner into a ring mold for a few minutes. Then serve your swell macaroni and cheese ring with creamed fish or eggs or leftover fowl. Garnish with tomato slices or whatever you like. You see, you can have company these days when you learn about Kraft Dinner tricks. Tomorrow at a nearby food store, invest just one red ration point in two boxes of Kraft Dinner. This is the National Broadcasting Company.